2004. I, th I think mm -hmm. that that's right. It's ten years ago. ago. So ten years ago that we were in mm -hmm. Sagan. And I, I remember arriving there and uh, kind of... Uh, uh, we, we stole a, 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 a late uh, afternoon together and, I, and you told me the story of, uh, of the group and your story and uh, it was such an interesting telling of the story. I don't know if you always do it that uh, in, in such an interesting way. And so, so what we're doing now is I just had, there was just this moment in our conversation which I found was absolutely magical. And uh, I'm hoping that we can uh, go back home again <laughs> to that kind of conversation to prove uh, uh, Tom, Thomas Wolfe wrong who says you can't go home again. So, um, you know, you, you, you spoke a little about last night, about the story of the group and the caravan. Mm -hmm. And then you, you described to me, actually, um, the first days of settling in, or maybe it was when you were exploring settling in, and then you met mm -hmm. uh, Miwosh. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just would love to hear that, to, to remember that again and share mm -hmm. it with the people who uh, uh, come to public mm -hmm. seminar. So uh, it was the meeting with me was was a year before establishing. Right, the that's right. So, so, so it's, it's how you found it. right it was part of finding the location. Yes. Right. So we were just exploring, you know, talking with people. It was late September. Mm -hmm. I remember a beautiful autumn, the mm -hmm. most loved. Uh, part of the year of Miłosz. He was written uh, very often that the the most beautiful time he loved is end of. September, beginning of October in Krasnogruda and mm -hmm. in his homeland, Szczetajnie. And uh, I remember uh, visiting our friend, mm -hmm. Andrzej Strumiło, who is a painter living for many years also here in New York and being an artist of UN uh, design studio, and decided you know, to move back and to, to make his living in a village mm -hmm. uh, near Seine. Mm -hmm. uh, it was on the riverbank of Czarna Hańcza, a mm -hmm. very special uh, ecological river. Uh, Why special ecological because river? Because it comes from the deepest lake uh -huh. in Poland. Uh -huh. ever. So you have a special fish there, mm -hmm. you have the special ecology of river uh, mm -hmm. uh, around, so this national park in fact mm -hmm. uh, around it. And uh, so exactly the time when we came to... And what I had with, in, in, with me in my rucksack mm -hmm. uh, for many years uh, during the 80s, uh, I had my master degree uh, about Miłosz. Mm -hmm. the, the, the title of it was uh, The Book of the Way, The Book of the Road mm -hmm. of Czesław Miłosz. Mm -hmm. And what because I couldn't publish it at that time, mm -hmm. so what I did was traveling and to read this for uh, oh. during you know many meetings in Poland. So like, what's happened to the book? I I left the manuscript or mm -hmm. one of the copy to mm -hmm. Andrzej Strumiło mm -hmm. uh, on on his desk, mm -hmm. uh, and we together with Ma Małgorzata, my wife, we left the house, mm -hmm. and there was a the path uh, along the river. And at that very moment, I saw uh, somebody, a person I imagine I could know, mm -hmm. uh, coming from other direction. So walking on the path. Wa walking on the path. Yeah. And it appeared it was just when we was. Uh, so we were so ashamed at that moment that we only we said was, you know, I'm Krzysztof Czeszewski, this is Małgorzata, and he said, I'm Czesław Miłosz, nice to meet you. And we crossed the path and each of us came to our direction. Mm. Uh, but uh, very, so we, uh, we went to our car, and, uh, took the car and drive, uh, drove to, to synagogue uh, in Seine. And we stopped in front of the synagogue, which at that time was kind of a gallery um, mm. of, of our small town. And immediately when we stopped, the car of Czesław Miłosz and his brother Andrzej stopped behind us. Mm. He jumped out and said, why are you escaping? Mm. Let's mm. talk. Yeah. 
Yeah. So did he know who you were at all? That, or For that moment, at that time, yeah. I didn't know uh, yeah. what yeah. was going on and how uh, and why sh he wants to talk. Right. My uh, presumption at that time was that probably he is just hung hungry of talking with young people. Maybe Andrzej Strumiło told him about something about us. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I didn't know, but... That was this moment. Left. So, so, so this is a time uh, mm -hmm. uh, he he couldn't return to Poland before 1989. Yes. So, so this is yeah. this is uh, almost immediate. Is this his first visit after uh, when he was allowed to come? Because mm -hmm. second, 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 second yeah. the first, but not in the region of right. his childhood. So it's the first time he's back to the region. It, yes. Yeah. So yeah. first time was you know during solidarity right. time ah, yeah, yeah. with Valencia, right. so right. it was right. easy to dance, you know, yes. to crack a war. So yeah. as a national hero, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's 80, so, it, it was 1981. Ah, uh, right, 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 right. When and they uh, consecrated uh, his his poem right. by the crosses, the yeah, at the monument in Gdansk. Of solidarity. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Things, and still it is there. Right. Yes. Uh, so uh, that, that time, at 1989, uh, the decision he made was, you know, first to visit his homeland. Uh, mm -hmm. So Andrzej, his brother, just picked him up at the airport mm -hmm. and uh, not telling anybody, no, to media mm -hmm. and so on. They just escaped uh -huh. uh, as a hidden journey, you know, secret journey to... Yeah. So he must have been astonished to see of to course. see him. Yes. Nobody yes. expected, you know, yeah. uh, him in, in that region. Right. And for him, it was the first time after fifty years right. of migration, you know, being uh, immigrant, so on. So very special time. Uh, so what 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 he did? He invited us for. Uh, he was staying in a very special place we called the Kamadulian Monastery mm -hmm. in on the Vigri Lake. Which is a kind of an eremite. I visited. With yes, you yes, remember. Yes, it's yes, it's a very special you. place. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, when, mm -hmm. when, this morning when I was trying to remember the date that we met, Naomi said, uh, "I have pictures of that, so I can go back and get the pictures and then find out the date." And it's, it's from there. From, exactly. from, from yeah. that time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we were staying at the same time yeah. he was staying yeah. uh, these days. The eremite monastery. So. Eremit small houses adapted right. yeah, yeah, to yeah, hotel yeah, rooms yeah, yeah. You know, with still this atmosphere of um, uh, you know silence, contemplation, yes. um, and so on. So and we spent together almost the whole evening and half of the night mm -hmm. uh, uh, on, on a very uh, decisive conversation for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, he was. He was just eager what's going on and mm. what is happening that the avant-garde theater artists, mm. you know, belonging to a uh, well-known theater like Karzienice before and after with our theater, that why they decided not to go to the West mm. to use this openness, but going to the far province mm. in the East, mm. in the places like Seine and Krasnogruda. He visited that day for the first mm. time after these 50 years, so right. he was all moved by what he saw, you know, this ruined manor house right. over grass. He knew about this from the pictures for the photos friends sent to him, right. you know, right. to Berkeley when he was staying. So he knew somehow what he could expect. Right. For him somehow it was a abandoned, ruined uh, place, right. yeah, forgotten by history, by people yeah. at the end of we the visited. world. You took yes. me there when it was still a room. Right. So, so I think it was the year that you were starting the renovations. So we were, you, when we went yeah. there, you talked to me about the renovations. Exactly. So 2004, right. yeah. yeah. So it yeah. And so his imagination was that he can um, keep alive this place only as a poet mm -hmm. and only with the poetic verses, you know, to come back, to revitalize, you know, mm. to make it mm. vital and so on. And that's what really he did, you know, mm. to the end of his life. He was coming back to the places, to the people from the past and giving them voice, commemorating them in a very special poetic way. Mm. So he was all, from one side, all like, 
like that. And when he was asked how you feel, you know, after uh, after these fifty years uh, of absence, uh, he, the, he's he didn't want to talk. You know, he he said it, it is too intimate for me. It's too private. I I don't want to share this. So he was keeping all these emotions inside mm -hmm. him, and I saw a poet working, so mm -hmm. he wanted to waste words <laughs> yes. in the conversation, just saving them for the poems, and he wrote after that one of the one of the love, uh, I, I, of the poems I loved more, which is called Return, mm -hmm. uh, about his, uh, his visit uh, to Krasnogruda, mm -hmm. Uh, and this is another story how I, how he com uh, communicate also to us what happened for him in that place and mm -hmm. how he wanted to transmit his experience mm -hmm. to to what we do and try to do at that time. But from other side, he was a person not wanting to be close in his memories. Mm -hmm. That's how we met him. Mm -hmm. him. He was eager what's mm -hmm. going on now. Mm -hmm. He was eager to talk with young people. He was eager to speak about ecology, about New Lithuania on the other side, about solidarity movement, about, you know, this mm -hmm. first election we had in 1989. So this is what you were talking about? Yes, from uh, the beginning, right, yes. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I, I followed, uh, next days I followed a little bit him, so he was never, you know, giving the signs that he, he wants to go only to, you know, to commemorate the past, but mm -hmm. always, yeah. uh, the same happened in Lithuania, in Vilnius, in Kaunas, you know, what is new, you know, what right. yeah. young well, people you know, are when, thinking. He, yeah. You know, he visited us in, in, mm -hmm. in, in, in mm -hmm. Krakow, mm -hmm. uh, the years that he was living mm -hmm. there, and we were having the institute, and you know, our student body was from the whole region, right. and indeed, mm. uh, he would read his poetry in Polish and in English, and uh, then he would be very anxious to finish with that, mm. and then to talk to the people from right. Serbia, Croatia, uh, mm. Moldova, mm. Uh, uh, and just kind of, right. uh, and he was, you know, he, he had the sense of, uh, uh, you know, his anti-nationalism mm. and, and his uh, was very, very evident, but his love of the different mm -hmm. stories, yes, uh, yes, and, and to know what were on what was on the young people's minds, yes. it was very very exciting. But also yeah. this fear to be not too much nostalgic. Yes, yes, you yes. know, yeah, not yeah. to build a kind of mythology around this, but rather to 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 step on the ground, mm -hmm. you know, on something that is real, what is concrete. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's how our conversation uh, yeah, yeah. developed mm -hmm. and after. So my feeling with Małgorzata was that we will speak about, you know, just universal things, finally with a great poet about spirituality, about poetry. Mm -hmm. But in contrary, he yeah. was, you know, very much like taking us down to the ground yes. all the time. We, we raise a question about yeah. some, you know, universal philosophical yeah. ideas from his books yeah. you know, about the borderland and yeah. so on. And his answer was, you know, but how you will make your living here? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You have kids, <laughs> what you will do is, you know, which yeah. school they will finish, you know, yeah. uh, how you make your house here, yeah. you know, and and so such precise details, yeah. how I can help. See, so what I remember is we uh -huh. visited we visited, and then we walked down to the lake, mm -hmm. and I'm kind of a swimming fanatic, and mm -hmm. I talked to you about swimming in this lake. Right. It's always wonderful, and you, and you remind, you told me that he loves swimming in that Absolutely. lake. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I would come back because this, uh, this past story is very connected to swimming, yeah. what happened yeah. in that place with him, for him. But at that very night, the discussion came into the direction of doing something concrete. Mm -hmm. And he was, and I, he was, and from later on, I have this perspective that he was somehow fascinated about the, these paths which were crossed. Right. Accidentally, our, but we were also like represent, re representatives of generation of something mm -hmm. of new Poland. You know, mm -hmm. we had this movement at that time. We started to initiate of small homelands. You know, 
pioneers going, decentralizing the country, going to the provinces, mm -hmm. starting new life and new building from the scratch, you know, mm -hmm. engaging in a community with, with new democracy. That's how we understood democracy and mm -hmm. the election. Uh, outcomes of election, uh, mm -hmm. that we should go to the mainstream com community life, out of our underground, right. out of alternative right. culture, right. just right. To, to work. Finally, there was possible to work with people, you know, mm -hmm. to to have partners, not only yeah, like before we had in, in Gajinice, that there were, you know, elders from the villages. Mm -hmm. That moment for us, well, you know, teachers, local government, uh, new politicians, you know, culture people, and new and especially young people were the major partners for mm -hmm. uh, for us at that very moment. So Miłosz was fascinated by, by by that situation and seeing us as uh, people who started to think about making life, you know, mm -hmm. in this place. He thought was condemned by history to the death, yes, right. to, to forgotten place mm -hmm. and to ruin. So he suddenly saw the chance that maybe history didn't win, mm -hmm. finally, mm -hmm. that there's a ch chance. His life was partly, you know, like never-ending struggle with history, which mm -hmm. for him was uh, like a demon, mm -hmm. like something, you know, an inhuman mm -hmm. power, which mm -hmm makes, you know, which decide about human life phase in a very cruel way, a way as a necessity, Simon Weil would say necessity, uh, which may, is like a mathematic power, you know, yes. ordering our lives. So Miłosz was this rioter together with Simon Weil and others, you know, how to contradict the history. But not in a very general way, but, you know, this small work we can start it, you know, mm -hmm. in Krasnogruda and Seine was the part of this struggle. We didn't know about that, mm -hmm. but his perspective was exactly like that. Yeah, yeah. So, of course, this uh -huh. is my politics of small things. Right. So. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. So. And he was very much, yeah. you know, to... Yeah. Uh, I mean, he, he and you and other people yeah. are my teachers, so this is the way it goes. And uh, one interesting thing happened this night, because when he started to raise the question, but what exactly you will do? Mm -hmm. you, you will call yourself Borderland Center, okay, but what you will do in, in fact? So we, will, we didn't have language for that, mm -hmm. in fact. We wanted to have Borderland Center, we, we were theater people, we were theater, but in, in, intuitively we, we, we thought that maybe we should, you know, go further to do some other things, but we didn't know exactly mm -hmm. what. And he, at that night, the, this was a moment, I remember we were sitting around the, the table, uh, we didn't find the words, the language, we were continuing with, with Andre, with his brother, and Czesław started to walk around the table, you, you know, like crazy, you know, like looking for something. Mm -hmm. And in the very moment he stood in front of us and said, I know what you will do. Mm -hmm. You will build a connective tissue. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh! <laughs> we thought, w w yeah, it was like you know, like discovery uh, of 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 really something when you find the word in 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 language, you can name something. Mm -hmm. You feel suddenly that you possess it. You mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. yes. So connective tissue is something you know. Your body, our organism, is consisted with different atoms, mm -hmm. but what makes our body living is not atom, we, it, it can die, but if connective tissue mm -hmm. is dying, then you die, mm -hmm. yes, so his thinking was about what we call now bridging, you know, bridge building, mm -hmm. now, working on, on y uniting, you know, uh, making reconciliation work, you know, rain bending bridges, all kind of things on this destroyed mosaic land, you know, post-genocide land, that, uh, that our work should be, you know, to find, you know, the kind of a glass bead game that you add one bead to the other and you create, again, a whole story 
uh, after that you create a con connective tissue for uh, for that people so this was in, in in that term the beginning of the borderland because really we started to work on the language of something what what defines very concretely our uh, our work and that was how it continued with me was that from one side he was very concrete in help mm -hmm. so imagine after one or two years of this conversation mm -hmm. i receive a call from new york mm -hmm. and the man is saying i'm a director of the ford foundation do you need our help <laughs> 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 that was all my fundraising <laughs> in my life, <laughs> and uh, of course I I said you know, so we had a meeting and we had you know like twenty years cooperation with Ford Foundation right. with our team. and of course Miłosz was behind yes. Yes. that so he was thinking how concretely yes. you know he was you know advocating you know, after years you know in Yale um, library in Bainak library. Mm -hmm. Uh, now you you have open archives of Miłosz. You can uh, have access to it, and and I, we found, for example, a letter he wrote in 1991, I mm -hmm. think, to Stanislav Baranczak, uh -huh. a great uh, Polish poet, a poet who was and, a professor at Harvard, uh -huh. and, and you know, in some ways, the bookend of, uh, of Miłosz. Miłosz is a great Polish poet in Berkeley, yes. uh, living there because of politics, yes. of, uh, and, mm. and Miłosz. Mm. Uh, uh, sat Berkeley. in Berkeley, uh, in, uh, in, uh, 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 in Berkeley, uh, Baranczak, in, in Harvard, yes. Mm -hmm. And this letter was... Both professors of Slavic language yes. and, and yeah. transla translate, it kind uh -huh. of were advocates of Polish poetry yeah. uh, uh, for mm -hmm. a larger world. Right. Yes. Yeah. And the, uh, the letter was in English mm -hmm. because Baranczak was a jury member of so-called Polkul Foundation mm -hmm. Prize, mm -hmm. which during the communist time, during Marshall Town, they were uh, supporting families of dissidents. Mm -hmm. and, but after 1989, they started to support new initiatives of democracy, yeah. first in Poland and then also in Belarus, Ukraine and, mm -hmm. and other parts of Soviet Union. Uh, and so the letter was, the whole letter was about the Borderland Foundation, mm -hmm. uh, advocating Baranczak to 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 give to re recommending him to give the prize, but when I read this letter, he, you know, it was like he knew in 1991 exactly what we will do. Not already we are doing. Yeah. We didn't yeah. know about this yes. uh, as well as he knew. You know, writing okay. to to Baranczak. So that was something what I discovered in archives after years, as well as I discovered that he had my master degree. Uh -huh. <laughs> Imagine. Yeah. So now my I've never asked him about that. Mm -hmm. But now my way of thinking is then when we cross our, we cross this pass mm -hmm. uh, on Sharnahatcha River Bank. He knew who you were. He could, yeah. you know, relate because probably it was a, one of the first master degree in communist time written, you know, about right. his poetry. So right. how it happened that he he had it, you know, yeah. it's another story, <laughs> probably, yeah. Yeah. but uh, that could be also mm -hmm. the, the, mm -hmm. the reason. So, so the, 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 this is new, so I, yes. I, I didn't this hear is, this, you this know, is new. 10 years ago, this wasn't part of the story. Right. Uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's really uh -huh. very interesting. I wonder, uh, um, you know, you had this conversation that night mm -hmm. and, and the following days and with, with him then four days and, uh, uh, sort of you imagined together, um, you know, you looked concretely at what was there mm -hmm. and you imagined together what might be and uh, uh, how much of that imagination has come to be? Do you think that sort of uh, already uh, the future of Borderlands was uh, mm -hmm. kind of in the imagination? Uh, uh, and what do you think that you've done, you know, what promise of that conversation do you think was realized, what promise perhaps has, hasn't mm -hmm. been realized, mm -hmm. have you done something else? Um, uh, I mean, I, I get the sense of a, a moment mm -hmm. uh, uh, pregnant with uh, significance and uh, mm -hmm. clairvoyance. Right. Um, it was the beginning of co conversation, right. which we continued. Right. The way Miłosz was speaking to us was the way 
she was sending books mm-hmm. me, or poem like return mm-hmm. but I remember him coming back in 1992 to our borderland and he brought with himself the book search of homeland mm-hmm. the the collection of essays but really exactly ne, the introduction to this book was about connective tissue builders ah. and the whole story he devoted it was like a handbook for us mm-hmm. of of a borderland workers right. because right. he started to deal with the common heritage of this uh, yes. borderlands yeah. about nationalism and all this kind so he was coming putting the book uh, on the table and asking check if I did my work right right so it, he was feeling somehow like a serving mm-hmm. you know the work you we or many people mm-hmm. uh, doing in this spirit and and trying to be helpful mm-hmm. it was also something amazing what i discovered his attention uh, to be helpful to mm-hmm. to the other in a very concrete uh, uh, situations so this was one one thing another you coming back to the, this first uh, meeting what he so in our idea and decisions that we will stay in same with the whole theater families and so on was and he was telling this to us listen you are probably the first generation after many centuries in this part of the world who can have future it means that you can think about your life and about your work in long term direct as something you can continue for many years and your children or your, your you know next generation can mm-hmm. you know build upon that because till now and this feeling i started only to discover we in this part of the world we didn't have future you, you know the history learned us to be short term oriented the history learned us that in each moment you can be deported or you you know to siberia or you, you can you should move for the bread you know to america or there will be another dictatorship you know which will uh, froze everything what you have and nobody depends on you somehow that moment he, uh, how he was reading the history that was the first moment after really many centuries that you know building this center we can have something for many years and invest in something but regain future and this for the borderland situation is a major thing you know because mm-hmm. if you don't have future you're becoming nationalist right. if you don't have future you hate your neighbors mm-hmm. you have different prejudices and so on if you start to have future you you understand that you can invest you think about your kids you know making friendship with lithuanians or you know jews and others you think in completely different way if you don't you know predict that the war will be soon but the peace for long term you you build your life in completely completely different way so it was in fact a really revolutionary situation which we don't have our mentality our culture our language was somehow differently defined you know for defended the fortress or to you know to be ready to move and to adopt ourselves to completely new situation but not to to uh, to live there for many many years so and his fear was you see that we are artists from the fir- famous alternative theater festivals the whole world is for us so probably we will stay few years right. and we you know we face difficulties of life of you know neighbors who will not uh, accept us or understand us and that we will disappear mm-hmm. yeah first that we will give up mm-hmm. as usually artists do mm-hmm. you know because our life is you know from festival to festival world is for us so don't think about you know rooting yourself mm-hmm. anchoring your work in in a concrete community so this is an, another major thing i started to discuss silently with me was i'm trying to respond in his uh, you, you know feelings how we should 
you know, defined our work, sh uh, how we should develop this long-term uh, perspective for, uh, for our work, how we should regain time for cultural activity and so on. But of course, it was the same with our community. You know, what uh, the fear Miłosz had, the community had not a, even like a fear, but like a natural thing. They didn't believe that we will stay. Even these who wanted us to move out and give them peace, right. you know, they was not strong against us because they... They figured you'd leave soon enough. So, you got yeah, bored, you know, yeah, this yeah, is yeah, not an important yeah, yeah. problem for them. Right, yeah? right. So, uh, is what happens that we stayed, you know, and, and fighting with all, you know, problems and situations, uh, life situations, proved somehow and gave us this kind of legitimacy both to Miłosz, I think, but also to local community. It was right. the same. Right. Yes. So I, I, I think that it's, uh, you know, I, I'm thinking of uh, three different things. So uh, uh, I'm wondering, the return, the poem, which I don't know, uh, do you know if, if it's translated into English? Yes, it is. Yes, I can send you. And, and do you think that I could actually uh, 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 kind of post it as, uh, uh, you know, the co what's the copyright? I'd like to post it along with the, this interview. And this we can talk with Tony. Okay, so, okay, okay. So, so let's yeah. let's mm -hmm. let's do that. Mm -hmm. and, and then uh, um, I'm um, uh, I, I, I'm thinking about fear, and 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 the extraordinary thing in this mm -hmm. kind of very very troubled land that you that you mm -hmm. decided to settle in. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there are many many fears. And uh, we've been mostly talking about the past, but uh, let's, for the moment, speak right. of the present. Uh, things are kind of rough there now. Mm -hmm. You know, the, uh, you're close to Belarus. Belarus is, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, has similar situations to Ukraine. You're not far from Ukraine. Mm -hmm. The whole uh, question of the relationship between the Russian min uh, minority and the uh, uh, various uh, Majorities, Lithuanian, uh, Latvian, uh, Estonian, right. uh, is actually an issue. So, so, mm -hmm. so there's this idea that somehow that you're going to have long-term peace, mm -hmm. but it seems that there are clouds on the horizon. I wonder what what you mm -hmm. what your thoughts are about that. Of course, it is uh, like usually in the borderlands. You don't have you know in peace in these terms. That are uh, always tensions and conflicts around. Uh, but of course you are right that the situation today is uh, is again mm, uh, creating more and more tensions and hesitation about the future, especially in uh, the societies of our eastern neighbors. Mm -hmm. So t having the Polish perspective, uh, we are now part of European Union. Right. Uh, what we can do in help in cooperation with our eastern neighbors. It's, it's a challenge for us, but at the same time, it, it gives us uh, the position in Europe. Mm -hmm. We are somehow needed with our mm -hmm. competence mm -hmm. to help uh, in these right. problems, yes, mm -hmm. and to, to engage in, uh, in that. So it is, I, as I feel, the situation is not to escape from that. Also, there are also people, or maybe not to play again, because it is also coming back uh, again a nationalistic card, you know, uh, right. uh, around you, you know issue of Vil uh, Polish uh, Vilno, Vilnius or V for Galicia, you know. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. No. Well, well, okay. Okay. This work of, and the tradition I mentioned yesterday of Kultura Giedroyc Miłosz pervades. So we still have majority in our country, and you, you know, kind of. Of especially young generations are very much engaged in what's going on in Maidan, in partnership with Ukraine, in you know helping devo uh, develop this problem. N not you know, and this is of course our problem, not against Russia, mm -hmm. but trying to build also a partnership with Russia. You know, to not build up uh, on our complexes and and mm -hmm. old fears, you know, right. with yeah. Russia, but overcome also this and try to find partners also right. in Russia for for the and of course they're there. Yes, yeah. But you are right, absolutely. 
uh, uh, that uh, this is uh, the he- he- hesitation period. But my belief is that in, we didn't lose this 20 years because, you know, this is like you have a very short time uh, of tra- transition to build the kind of uh, capacity you can use in, in the danger new right. situation yes. if you lost this time. Mm-hmm. For example, the question is if this time was used in Crimea mm-hmm. uh, over these 20 yeah. years you know, to make these people feeling that they are part of Ukraine. You, you, Ukraine. Yeah. That's a question. Yes. Uh, so uh, circumstances were different. You know, yeah. the post-Soviet uh, territories yes. are not the same as Poland, former Czechoslovakia, yes. or Hung- Hungary. We we started from different the positions. Things yeah. that don't so look so sh- good in Hungary. Yeah. So we should understand that Ukrainians need much yeah. more, lo- right. much more time for that. But. Uh, but it happened what happened now, yes, uh, with this situation. So that's how we could, you know, for me it's only how we should continue, it, right. you know, right. how you go with this know-how. Also we had this borderland school, for example, mostly for people from Ukraine, Belarus and Georgia now, yes. Okay, so t- t- tell me mm-hmm. a word or two about this borderland school and and uh, and then I... I well, First, that tell, say something about the Borderlands School. It is um, academy for bridge builder, builders. Mm-hmm. We teach leaders uh, of different NGO and cultural organizations, but also teachers, journalists, mm-hmm. and local government members in this bridge building building skills. So they have two years of the schools to de- of the school to develop their own programs. They want to doing their own communities mm-hmm. and we can monitor we travel also with our staff to that very places in ukraine belarus mm-hmm. and georgia and, and and now we are on the stage of giving them grants finally we achieve also this stage mm-hmm. that we can that's, that's only uh, not help with how, uh, know-how but uh, with financial support that they can put into realization the pro- uh, programs and so on Okay, so, so, so then uh, you know we can't go on uh, forever with this discussion. Mm-hmm. Though I would like to, uh, or I'd like to go on for uh, uh, you know hours, uh, but just uh, kind of finish the story with me, Rosh. Yeah. You know, so, mm-hmm. so, so uh, you met him. He supported you through the years. Uh, how did you come? How did he come to give you the gift of mm-hmm. the uh, of his house? That's another story. He ne, he never spoke to me directly. So the poem returns mm-hmm. about that, among others. So it was the first mes- message I received. Why this place was so relevant? I mean, Krasnogruda was so mm-hmm. relevant to him. Why he first thing he wanted to do in free Poland, you know, was to escape and to visit. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is not the place he was born. Mm-hmm. The place Chetania, he was born is in today's Lithuania. Mm-hmm. So at that time we met, it was still Soviet Union. So right. he didn't. Right. But he uh, he was coming back to Krasnogruda in his poetry and writings many many times. And of course you can say there was a love affair there. Mm-hmm. There was a student, you know, coming from Vilnius, uh, Vilnius to the aunts. Mm-hmm. and uh, having first love initiations and mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. you you after it connect to, to it very much but it was so something deeper mm-hmm. in that because imagine the the moment when he was still a child and of course in the background of that was a love to the older woman mm-hmm. he he, he felt uh, in love with him and she abandoned her. Uh, with yeah. her and she abandoned him for another yeah. guy from Warsaw. He wanted even to commit suicide in the manor, mm-hmm. in the place we uh, we haven't. He played with this Russian roulette, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. uh, 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 pistol. Mm-hmm. You put, you know, uh, bullets, yeah. but not every, so <laughs> turn it. And make things like that. After years, he said a stupid thing, but the thing you die from, yeah. Mm. Also, 
so very tragic moment but there was something you know uh, behind that because he suddenly discovered himself as a very young person against others against people you know old people sitting his parents you know his family his uh, older guys from Warsaw sitting on the porch of the manor and having you know it their own world mm -hmm. and sending him a message listen boy sooner or later you will come to us and we will you will become like us and you will sing like we sing and you will accept the world we live and that woman was at Miłosz said to himself as a very young person listen I don't want to be like you I promise to myself yes. to defend my imaginary my childhood things my feelings my love my what all I believed as a child you know uh, as uh, I promise to defend it for the whole life the man I've met after 50 years was uh, the old man coming to the very place and giving like a testimony to this promise after mm -hmm. many years. What, uh, what, what I've made with my, uh, in my life, you know, what I, was I faithful mm -hmm. to myself, you know, from, and I think it's, you know, that's something that connects me more uh, uh, with me was than uh, everything else. Mm -hmm. I remember this moment in my life, <laughs> and I think each of us, yes, at this situation. Well, yeah. some of us, oh, yeah, or some of us, or some, some of us everyone forget. remembers, yes. but but but, but uh, uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. uh, don't dwell on it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so rebuilding the place of Krasnogruda, revitalizing this place and giving all the efforts. I was thinking about, of course, Academy of Bridge Builders. That's what, how we discussed also with Miłosz. Mm -hmm. The first sentence he said, please don't build the museum here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. yes. Right. So, and, and we were talking about, you know, the school, you know, yes. the academy, we can have it. But uh, this is you know, something uh, important, but not everything about the place. So, the Krasnogruda for me, in fact, is a place we invite people to to remember the promise. So, so I want to note, um, I, I haven't oh. visited you, but you built your uh, your your own house uh, just uh, yes, uh, very uh, close, very very close. You, you, mean, you just yeah. it's like walk on mm -hmm. a field and you yes. go from one to the other. There is and a small lake to yes. my house, and there is a bridge on yes. this lake yeah, yeah. you can yes. cross, and yeah. there is a capilla on uh, the bridge we can uh -huh. sit and talk. Okay, so so, so when when uh, we met, you yeah. pointed to the lot and you imagined it, and now I, I'll have right. to come back mm -hmm. and have that conversation with you. Absolutely, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that's my invitation, Jeff. Okay. To have a conversation on the bridge, also with camera, because that's what I do with my friends and people I respect very much, is that I invite them for the conversation on the bridge about the experience of preaching life. You know, we we have in different dimensions. So, if I may invite I, you, now, I, I, thank you very much mm -hmm. for the invitation. Mm -hmm. I'll do all my can. I can to actually honor it. Not only would I go, but my, my, my uh, that I bring my, my no, children. I uh, uh, Naomi, but but, but also mm -hmm. uh, my my uh, mm -hmm. my uh, son-in-law is is uh, an artist in Paris, and uh, mm -hmm. now my grandson is there. I thought, oh, it would be wonderful to go. We should okay. keep our yeah. promises. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and the interesting thing is, I actually can go through Lithuania, and then it's it's Absolutely. not it's not such a, uh, yeah, a yeah, long trip. We can pick yeah. you up. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah. So come us. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so so just uh, remind me. Uh, how did it come about that he gave you the property? How, how did you, right. you know, um, mm -hmm. um, when did you know this was going to happen? How how did he, in fact, give it to you? This was when we started to have this conversation, not then only about the same borderland center, but about the possibility of regaining Krasnogruda Manor and to revitalizing it. Um, uh, we started to act and checking what is possible. And so, what year is this? It was the 
beginning of nineties or the right. mid nineties. Right. So, so, so you you had been talking to him for a number of years. Yes. And yeah. then, and then, mm -hmm. uh, and of course we couldn't uh, make it legally. It is a property of forest industry mm -hmm. in Poland mm -hmm. now, so it's this is much complicated issue, not mm -hmm. so easy. So what we did, it was a, a very symbolic, a symbolical gesture from mm -hmm. one side that. They wrote a letter, they, I mean, Andrzej and Czesław, brothers, because Andrzej was also a very dear person mm -hmm. of us. He was like a, a person of a family memory. He was mm -hmm. taking care about the whole... Did he stay in Poland? Yes. yes. Yeah. He stayed and he suffered uh -huh. quite a lot because mm -hmm. of his brother, you mm -hmm. know, yes. dissident career and, right. and so on. A, a wonderful uh, person, filmmaker. Mm -hmm. and, and he was very much devoted also to Krasnogruda uh, mm -hmm. place and to, to the work we do. Uh, so they both signed a letter like giving into our hands the land and the manor mm -hmm. and everything mm -hmm. uh, connected to that. And in a very beautiful way they describe that they give also to our hands mm, these people who, who live there, yes, mm -hmm. that we will care about the mm. memory not only of the place but also of the people and souls uh, living there so it was like a, tes a testimony you know mm. you, you are receiving and we we started to struggle to put it uh, to realization it was mm. like a kind of a, a deep obligation mm. uh, we, we had to uh, to Czesław Miłosz and to all all these people so always you know uh, that's again the situation when you take something from, and we took a lot from Miłosz and from his book, but also for, uh, from his present and help. So that all your life is how to give back. Yes. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's all about our life, I believe. We are just trying to give back what we're receiving, you know, and if you are lucky enough to receive so much, you know, then you, you should find a way how to give back it. Well, mm -hmm. these days people mm -hmm. are noting that you've been doing a good job. Thanks so, a lot. Yeah. And so, mm -hmm. uh, but it's a struggle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm.